you know, the ethic of black life in South Africa today, unfortunately, you know, is one that doesn't inspire confidence. Now, what do we mean by the ethic of black life? Simply, it is how black life is viewed and with what cultural capital is black life understood in the country today. We live in a society where white life seems to represent hope, success, and value. Black life seems to represent lack in all its forms. Black life lacks value. There is no hope. You know, there is no dreams. In fact, we, we are a people that have long ceased to dream, you know, to aspire, you know, to, to things, you know, um, worthy of, of dreaming about. Now, there is a way in which black people perceive and encounter white people. So when, when black people are going to encounter a white person, there are certain assumptions, you know, that come to the fore from their subconscious. Now, because these things are part of our everyday lives, we don't think about it. You don't think that, okay, now I'm going to encounter a white person, I should comport myself differently. There are things I can say, there are things I cannot say. Because these things have become part of our everyday lives, they become a reflex. Without you thinking about it, there's a way in which you relate to a white person. There are things that you perceive as doable, as acceptable in your relationship and encounter with a white person. Now, on the other hand, when you encounter a black person, it seems like there is no caution that you have to take. It seems like, you know, when you encounter a black person, you are encountering a void. Everything is permissible. The bar for the permissible is so low when you encounter a black person. There is a close relationship that modernity establishes between education and capital. What is called good education begins to flow in that, you know, same path where capital flows. So now you tend to find good schools, what is called good schools, where money is. Now you tend to find you know, good universities, and to access good universities, you need capital. Now, the distinction between the educated and the uneducated, then as a result, is this distinction between those who have money and those who don't have money. As black people, we must recognize that black people in this country do not own wealth. The only wealth we have, you know, as black people, are the few black professionals who have developed a critical faculty who can think about their being black, you know, critically, and then put themselves at the service, you know, of other black people. I'll demonstrate what I, what I mean. Now, this country has medical doctors in large numbers. This country has engineers in large numbers. Let's take the example of engineers. You have structural engineers, you have civil engineers, you know, in this country. You want to tell me that all these engineers that we have in this country can't just for one day or two days or three days come together and figure out what is the best model for rural roads in South Africa? Now, because we have a, a, an education system that says that the value of your education is of it as a commodity that enables you to consume other commodities, they won't do it. They won't come together and say, look, five of us can sit as engineers, as civil engineers, as construction engineers, and think what is the best, cheap, reliable model for rural roads. They won't do it because they think of their education as having an instrumental value. It enables them to consume other commodities. So until someone says, I will pay you, you know, they won't do it. Now, for a society like South Africa that has so many problems as a result of colonialism, you still have an education that says to people, society's problems are not your primary objective. Your primary objective, you know, is consumption or the value of your education is of it as a commodity. Now, there has to be something wrong with that education system. There has to be wrong with an education system that does not say to us as medical doctors, that does not say to us as engineers, Part of what we have trained you for is to resolve the problems of your society. It is not to earn money. It is, it is to rehumanize the society that you know you live in. Now, medical doctors in this country work, you know, exceedingly hard for hours, earning money at every moment of that hour. And then once at the end of the year, they, they, they then go volunteer their services, you know, uh, for one day and offer free medical help, you know, to the poor for one day. Now, there's no nation that was ever cured in one day. 
Now, would medical doctors be poorer? Especially black medical doctors, and this I must emphasize. I, I do not expect this of white people. I expect this of black people. Would, would there be something that would leave black medical doctors poorer if they said, you know, even if I'm in private practice, once a week, I'm going to offer my services for free to the poor. Could they not come, you know, into a certain understanding with the state and say that for one day, poor people can come to my surgery. All that I ask of the government is to provide me with the medication that I'm going to dispense. My skills are available for free. We can construct a different and a more humane society if we thought of our education not as a commodity.